I've already explained how icons can be a great attention grabber. They are a simple and effective way to draw users into the content of your website. Let's see how we can use icons in practice. For this lesson, I'll be showing you how to add Google Material icons. There are other services like Font Awesome that also serve up icons. The process in adding them to your website will be similar. Icons serve the same psychological purpose as paragraph breaks. They visually break up the content, making it less intimidating. A well-formatted page with the text broken into easily accessible paragraphs and accented by icons is easy to read and visually interesting enough to sustain the user's attention. So stop wasting time writing so much content that no one will read and start using icons to help or break up your content. This is the finalized page that we'll be using. And you can see that I haven't gone overboard, but I'm adding icons just to enhance the page. I have this heart icon right here, which is representing the word love. As you can see, this makes the page a little bit more visually interesting. We're also using icons on the top of each of these articles, and this helps identify the article in regards to the content that it's going to contain. And finally, I'm even using icons on my links. These double arrows are also material icons. Here's the starting HTML page that we're going to be working with. So it looks pretty plain without the icons. Let me show you the HTML and CSS that I'm starting to work with. Here's my starting HTML. This is an HTML5 page. It is responsive. I'm already adding a Google font. I'm linking out to a CSS reset and my own personal style. And then inside the body, I have a section with a class of services. This wraps around all of the content on my page. I have an H1, I have a paragraph, and then I have three articles. The articles all contain an H3, a paragraph, and at the end of the paragraph, I have a link. In regards to the CSS, here is my starting CSS. I have some basic styles on the HTML as well as the various elements that I'm using on my page. It is worth noting that I am using flex with a flex direction of column. This is to ensure that my page is responsive. So when my page is a little bit more on the narrow side, you can see how everything will stack into one column. I also have some formatting on my headings, my paragraphs, and on my links. I've already added a display flex and align items of center to the A element. This is not doing anything currently, but once we add in our icon, this will ensure that both the text and the icon align in the vertical center. I also have a hover, which changes my link color to teal. And then finally, I have a media query. For the media query, I am using CSS grid and I am making three columns with the articles. I am using the grid template area method so that I can have the heading and the supporting paragraph take up one full row of content. If you want more information on grid or flex, I would encourage you to view my grid and flex videos on this same channel. Let's go ahead and let's talk about material icons. As I mentioned, the material icons are part of the Google suite of elements to add to your website. If you're at the fonts.google.com website, you will find that at the top, next to browse fonts is an icon link. If we click on this link, it will take you to the material icons. Material icons are available in a variety of different styles. As you can see, you have a ton of different icons available for you to use on your web pages. If you have an idea of what sort of icon that you want, you can go ahead and search material icons. So if I search for people, you can see that it's going to bring up a bunch of icons that have something to do with people. If you want more information on any of these icons, all you have to do is click it and then it will go ahead and give you some of the code that you need in order to incorporate this onto your page. In addition, at the top, you have different options. You have outlined, filled, rounded, sharp, and two-tone. The two-tone is not available for all icons, but some of the icons will allow you to create two tones with the graphics that you're going to incorporate. In addition, sharp and rounded may not change 
certain icons so the face icon doesn't really change but if we look down here at this icon which has this admin panel if you look carefully at the top you can see how it's rather pointed if I go to rounded these edges become softer and here is the file filled and finally if it's outlined it's just going to show us an outline you'll need to choose what sort of icon that you want to use so that you can get the appropriate code to add it into your web page. Now I have to say in all honesty, finding the code in order to add the icons into your website is not quite as easy as finding the code for the fonts. So let me walk you through this process. If you look over here in this little drawer that opens once you click any of the icons, not only will you be able to specify different sorts of attributes about the icon, if you look down here, it's going to give you the actual HTML code for that particular icon. So for our icon right here, let's go ahead and let's search for heart. That's going to be the first icon that we'll use. And you can see I have quite a few hearts. I'm going to use this filled heart right here. So I'm going to click this and it's going to provide me with some code. I'll go ahead and I'll copy this code. I will go into my HTML and I'm going to paste this in. So I want the heart to replace the word love. I'm going to highlight love and I'm going to add in this code. The code that is provided to me is going to exist within a span tag. So if we look, we have a span with a class of material-icons-outlined. It also is going to have some text that shows in this case, it's going to be favorite. Then we close the span tag. Now you can see if we save the page and we refresh in the browser, this is what you get. The word favorite is displaying. This is not what we want. We want a heart to replace the word favorite. If we go back to the Google font page and we go ahead and read right here, it's going to say, follow the instructions to embed the icon font into your site and learn how to style your icons using CSS. If you click this link, and I'll just open it in another tab, you're not going to see anything about icons on the landing page. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click this get started link. This is going to take you to a page that talks about Google fonts. Now we already know about Google fonts because we covered those in an earlier exercise. If you look at the navigation here on the left and you click the material icons guide this will take you to the page that gets in depth in regards to material icons if you want to read through this this will give you more details about material icons it'll let you know about the licensing and how you can download individual icons we're going to want to go down here to setup method one this allows us to add the icons in a similar fashion as how we added Google Fonts. So I'm going to copy this link element. I'm going to go into the head section of my page and we'll just make a comment here that says material icons. Underneath the comment, I'm going to paste in the code that I just copied. If we save our page now and we go back to our website and refresh, you can see that now the word favorite has been replaced by a black heart. So this is doing something more along the lines of what we want. If you continue to read through this particular page, it's going to give you some additional information to how you can add the material icons to your website. Since we already have them being added using the CDN method, we don't need to worry about these other additional methods of adding the icons. But if you wanted to use the at font face method, then this is the code that you're going to need in order to do it in that manner. If you do end up self hosting, you'll also need this additional CSS within your CSS file. Now that I have this code here, I want to change the color of the heart to red. We can do that by adjusting our own CSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the material icon class as a hook. I'll go into my CSS file and I'm going to make a rule underneath my normal H2. This is going to be for H2 dot material icons. So this will target that span element. What I'm going to simply do here is change the color and I'll plug in a hex value that will allow me to render out the heart as being red. 
If we save and refresh the page now, you'll see that my heart has changed to be a red color. As you can see, it's really easy for you to modify the colors of the icons and add them into your project. Let's go ahead and add some additional icons. I'll go back to the icon page of Google Fonts and what we're going to do here is we're going to search for some additional icons. The first thing I'm going to search for is going to be house. As you can see, a lot of different icons come up, so you're going to want to pick the house that resonates with you. I'm going to use this cottage right here. As I mentioned before, you have different options for how that particular icon is rendered. So if you prefer a different version of the particular icon, you need to click on the type of shape. I kind of like the sharp cottage, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this code. I'll come back to my HTML and I'm going to add this code before the H3. So right inside of the article, I'm going to paste this in. For whatever reason, when you paste in the code, it splits it onto multiple lines. That isn't really necessary, so I prefer just to clean it up. Now, if we save our page and we come back to the HTML and refresh, you will see that the icon is not showing up. The reason that the icon is not showing up is because we are using a different version of the outline. In this case, we are using the sharp version. If you want to take advantage of these different styles of the icons, you need to adjust your link element or you need to update the embedded CSS. Since I am using the link method, I'm going to adjust the code right here. Now, for whatever reason, on the Google website, it does not discuss this particular nuance. I'm not sure as to why it doesn't explain it, but pay attention here if you want to take advantage of these other styles of material icons. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace my link with a slightly modified link. So instead of just linking to the family of material plus icons, I'm going to link out to material plus icons and material plus icons plus outlined and material plus icons plus two plus tone and material plus icons plus round, etc. This will now add the five different families of the icons. If you are working on a project where you don't plan to use all of these, just go ahead and delete the versions that you don't want. So if I didn't want to use round, I would simply get rid of that declaration. For my example here, I'm going to leave all of these here. The disadvantage of linking out to all of them is it could slightly increase your file size. So just be careful with that. If I save the page now and we go back out to the browser and we refresh, you're going to see that the word cottage has now been replaced with this icon. Let's go ahead and let's add some icons for family and pets. I'll search for family and I'm going to use this family restroom icon. In this case, I'm going to use the rounded version. So I'm going to copy this code. I'll come down into the article that talks about family. We'll paste this in. I'm going to clean up the code by just eliminating some of those line breaks. And finally, I'm going to search for pets and I'll just use this paw print right here. The paw print doesn't have too much of a difference between any of the different styles of the icon. So I'll just use rounded for this one. Once again, I'm going to paste this in and simply clean up. If we save now and we go back and refresh, you can see that these new icons have been added. Now, ultimately what I would like to do here is I would like the icons to be larger and I want to change the color. All I have to do to make those changes is I have to declare some CSS that will allow me to control these particular attributes. Now, because these may have different sorts of class names, sharp, round, and possibly outlined, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an additional class so that I can get all of these together. I like to just use MI for material icons. This in itself will not make any change to my page. I'm simply adding an additional class to these items. Now that I have this class, I'll go into my CSS and I'm going to come down here to the bottom of the mobile version of my CSS. We'll make a rule for .mi and I'm going to change the font size 
we'll use six rims to make these fairly larger. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the color. I want my icons to be a teal shade. Now, if I save and we refresh, you can see that I have much larger versions of the icons displaying. In addition, I've changed the color. The final thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our learn more links look a little bit more interesting by adding an arrow. I'll go back to the material icons. I'm going to search for arrow and you can see that there's a wide variety of arrows available to me. What we're going to do is we're going to use this double arrow. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to provide me with the code. I'll copy this. We'll go back into the HTML and after the word learn more still within the link tag, I'm going to paste in the span code and I'm just going to clean up the code because this bothers me. I will now copy the span element and I'm going to go to every link and after the word more, I'll paste in this code. If we go back to our page and we refresh, you can see that the Chevron arrows are now showing after the links. If you want to adjust these at all, all you need to do is target them with some CSS. Using icons is fairly easy once you get the hang of it. As I mentioned, there are a ton of different icons. You can search by category or you can simply type in a keyword and the icons will show up. So if I search for water, for instance, it's going to bring me any water related icons. I really think that icons add a nice touch to your website. They will, as I mentioned, help to visually break up content and just add more interest to your website in general. I hope you have fun using icons in your projects.